Um, in November, we did an event with uh, Chris Carter, and he asked Jillian Anderson, Frank Spotnitz, and Rob Bowman, when was the first time you cursed my name? <laughs> so, since you both have worked with Chris, I was wondering, when was the first time you cursed Chris Carter's name? And also, now that you're essentially in Chris Carter's shoes, has your perspective changed on why you would curse him? You know? <laughs> I can't remember the first time I cursed his name, but, uh, but in hindsight, uh, you know, uh, actually, this is another. Rob Bowman has given me two great. I'm talking about Rob now. But Rob has given me two great quotes that I use all the time. One of them is, I said earlier, is chicks dig scars, <laughs> and, and, the, and the other is that uh, it's that was a Rob Bowmanism. And another one that Rob always said that I always love to remember is, "The pain fades, but the glory remains." You know, which is what he always used to say. And looking back again in hindsight. Uh, it was the greatest job ever in so many ways. I mean, I, I Breaking Bad, because it's my personal baby, it's, it's got a rank as my number one job ever, but X-Files was a very close second. And, you know, it bought me my house, and it, 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 it taught me how to be a producer, it taught me how to be a writer, a much better writer than I was when I got there. And it was, it was wonderful. And there were probably moments where I've cursed Chris, and as we always curse our bosses, no matter where we work at some time or another. But the second part of your question is, 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 is the one I prefer to focus on, which is that now that I'm doing it, I see so many things about, I see it from his point of view now in so many ways, where I think to myself, gee, when I was mad at Chris on that particular day, now I see it from the point of view of the showrunner, and, and he was right to give me extra grief about so and such or whatever. And now I see it from his perspective, and it's a very different perspective. And it's, uh, but it doesn't bother me either now. I, I know there are times when my people who work for me, whether they're the writers or the actors or the directors or the crew, the various crew, the producers, where they're mad at me about something or they think I'm being a jerk. It's funny because I don't, just so long as I'm not actually being one, just so long as, as my heart is, and I have moments of being petty and nasty, but, but in a, any given moment when I know someone's mad at me, or worst of all, when I have to fire someone, uh, it's easy to lose sleep over something like that. But I guess what I've learned is that the more you do this job, if your heart is in a, this is going to sound corny, but if you're doing it, I don't try to reword it. If you're doing it for reasons simply about making a good show and you're not trying to hurt anyone, you're just doing what needs to be done for the best, to make the best show you can make, then you sleep at night, even if you know people are actively mad at you at any given moment. Chris learned that years before I did, doing the job years before I did. But I, it's funny, I look back, I have even more fondness than I would have anyway. And I have a lot of fondness for Chris. I have even more now that I see it from what amounts to something closer to his perspective. I never cursed either of them. I've been very fortunate to work with both of you. Oh, come on. I'm going to you right now. You're good. <laughs>